Candy Shaw, uh, in my words, is a mother. She's a wife. She's an educator. And um, those things are very important to me. And I think the most important thing of Candy Shaw is she's a mentor and she's a coach. And I think that's something I carry in such high regard. My father's been a hairdresser for almost 60 years, actually. And I never went to beauty school. And in Georgia, you could apprentice and you could follow uh, that method of becoming a hairdresser. So Candy Shaw, the person, never went to college, never went to beauty school. I'm a street punk. I mean, really, I was born out of the will and desire to become something. Um, I learned from some of the greatest hairdressers. I was so blessed to spend time with the Vidal's and the Horse Recklebackers and the John and Susie Chadwick's of the world. I mean, I was really blessed that my, my parents sent me away to, to break bread with all these industry greats. Uh, I myself am still behind the chair and love that. That is a part of who I am and that's a part of something that I don't think I ever want to change. It keeps a pulse on who, you know, what consumers want and what your staff wants and what learners want. And so for me, I'm still behind the chair four days a week. Uh, I see between 25 and 35 guests a day. I love that part of my business. I have one salon in Atlanta. I have 50 chairs. It's 50 year young. Everybody has a rhythm. Uh, we all, you know, it, maybe it's cliche to say we march to the beat of a different drummer, but truly once you find your rhythm, you can overcome any obstacle. My father is severely dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. My daughter, uh, I have three kids, and my daughter who's 14 is dyslexic. And, you know, her rhythm is completely different than her brother's. And so I would say to anybody who feels challenged with that, and really it's a gift, I feel like it's been a real gift in my life because it's helped me to overcome obstacles that no one else can understand. I think any time we have a challenge, we can take it as a good thing or we can take that as a defeat. And um, so my advice to the student is uh, tell your teachers what, you, what your needs are and hopefully they will back into the flexibility of how to teach you. It's really ironic that when I teach uh, now in my academy and on the road, how many kids come to me when I tell them that story about having a learning disability, how just they come to me almost in tears, like there's nobody who's ever been that raw and said, I learned literally by taking a piece of clay and making a sculpture. I took off everything that didn't look like what I wanted. I mean, everything in a book just really scared me. And so being able to feel, touch, smell, be, um, that's why hairdressing is so great, is it creates these people who can find themselves. Um, so my advice is don't give up. Don't give up because there's a place for you. You'll find it. Balayage is like the little black dress. It's not going away. I mean, truly, it is a revolution. And I, I've been in this industry long enough to see scissors be long and Vidal make the scissors short. I mean, my own father was in the garage cutting the tips off of scissors. He was a barber, and he was wanting to cut hair with the small scissor. I've also been in this industry long enough to see the cap, you know, and I pulled hair through a cap. And then I saw actually saran and clips. And then it went and evolved to foil highlighting. So you asked me the question, why balayage? And I tell you, it's the next revolution of how hairdressers are gonna see image, trend, and beauty. And for me, I didn't just sort of get in line and say, oh, I think that's the next trend, I'm gonna go over here. I just literally organically grew as a hair painter. Being a painter is something that I am outside of the world of hairdressing as well. It's something that I've always had a passion for. I'm actually severely dyslexic, if you wanna know the truth. And um, for me, everything was about vision and about seeing an image 
and trying to replicate that. Now I'm a hair cutter too, and I still cut hair and obviously paint hair. And I was painting hair before painting hair was cool. Uh, 20 years, people would look at me like, you've lost your mind, you know, we're putting foils in, why are you painting hair? But to me it was freedom. And artistic freedom and hair color was just something that just really related to me. It just permeated with me uh, because I was such a person of learning through sight and not, you know, something that was a technical aspect. I have a, many sayings and one is, paint your way to financial freedom. You know, everybody wants to make more money. I mean, I don't ever see a show of hands of anybody who wants to work longer hours. Um, they all want to work less and make more. And I think our world is so built on a drive-in society now. You know, we are so quick to have everything at our fingertips. So why not have hair color that is quick and efficient as well? I think it's a consumer-driven thing that, of course, celebrity red carpet hair is that. Of course, we all look at Giselle Bündchen or, you know, any great celebrity and say, we want to look like that. But I think it's really more than that. As a salon owner, you really need to understand the benefit of what you're giving to your staff. And that is not only the freedom to be an artist, but also the ability to earn more uh, through your existing clientele and the ability to put your mark on something that can't be replicated across the street.